Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the tier 10 German battleship, der Große Kurfürst, and I'm using these modules on commander skills. And as you'll notice, I am using the IFHE or HEAP skill on a battleship. I'll talk about the specifics uh, in a video later today. However, the basic idea is that uh, your secondaries will be able to penetrate 32 millimeters of, meters of armor. And as a result, your secondaries will be able to damage other battleships at the front and rear, which can be quite useful. Now, I don't know if this is actually the best build for the Kurfürst, so don't just uh, take it. Uh, listen to the other video and listen to the reasoning given. Anyways, um, because I spawned on the A side of the, uh, of the on this map, I went, well, for the A cap with our gearing. And, uh, well, an enemy gearing came around. I will try to get slightly closer for secondaries and maybe and uh, shoot with my guns, but I'm not expecting all that much because I'm gonna turn away. It's It would be unnecessarily risky to try to go into that cap zone for me right now. While yes, I am in a division with two other Kurfürsts, the problem is that if I go in, I imagine those two will follow, and considering there's a Hindenburg, Moskva, Iowa, Montana, a Gearing, um, over there, we might actually lose the fight and that would be just throwing our ships away. It's not worth it, at least not at this stage of the game. Because er losing uh, your top tier battleships early on is a pretty big loss because you can't contest much anymore. Anyways, uh, I mean, I've, I've already used the heal and yet I'm still down 20,000 HP and I'm burning without the con uh, damage control party available, so this is definitely a dangerous gamble would be a very dangerous gamble to go in. I think what I just did is much more appropriate where, you know, I went around, took a few shots, uh, tried taking a few shots myself. Unfortunately, I didn't get anything in return. However, I probably did scare the enemy gearing slightly and uh, I did provide some backup for our gearing and because our team was able to take out the enemy gearing, uh, or perhaps the enemy or our gearing was able to take out their gearing, I'm not quite certain how it exactly went. Well, they lost their destroyer at the A cap and we kept ours, so our gearing and Kagero should be able to easily take the A cap now. While we, you know, shell from range. Because, honestly, early on, while it's boring, and I guess this is a fault in the design of the game, you are still better off not going in so early, because you want to see what happens. And once you see what happens, you can decide on the best course of action. Anyways, uh, I see a uh, Yuguma try capping B, and uh, it appears the Yuguma is going to run aground, so I'm gonna try to take a shot, and hopefully it'll work out. Uh, I mean, she is already losing a lot of HP, so two overpens would do it. Which is exactly what I got. Goodbye, Yuguma. And this is the kind of thing that uh, you want to happen. You see, it's more important to have more guns on the table than having uh, specifically more HP. Because if you have more guns on the table but everybody is low HP, you can still do important things like um, take out that Yugum over there when she overextends like that. But you can't do that if you have a lot of HP but very few guns. So you want everybody to tank a little bit of damage and you want to take an advan advantageous position in the game and then just hold it. Because if you overextend, you're risking the game. You're, you might just throw it away. You see, in StarCraft 2, there is this um, common idea that um, you play against your opponent and you're both fairly equal. That is, if you take an advantage in some fashion, you're also giving something else away for that. And that means um, you can very easily overextend. And if you overextend, you can literally just lose the game because of it. So it's better if you take an advantage and then try to hold it and then carry it over until the end of the game because there is a set amount of time left. You don't have to do something crazy like um, when World of Warships released where in standard battle you could literally get draws and draws were the worst case scenario because both sizes both sides were essentially awarded a loss. Yes, it was technically called a draw, but neither side got the winning experience bonus and both sides got the experience as you would on a loss. So anyways, um, that's basically the idea. So 
if you take like let's say A and B caps and the enemy team takes the C cap, just hold it. Because as the game is going, you're going to win. And then the enemy team has to attack into you and as I've said a million times already, defending is much easier than attacking. So you want to do those kinds of actions. Yes, it's slightly boring and often it ends up being very boring because people just don't know. They Like the enemy team just won't care. They will just sit back and relax. So sometimes, yes, I, I do the same thing. I do, but I do think that it's a slight mistake at least. So anyways, I'm heading towards the C cap. I mean, we have the C cap. They have none of the caps. They have to push into a cap zone and take it. Right now, we are just trading ships and that is completely all right with us because... We have the cap zone, they don't, well, they just started capping the sea cap. So we have to now defend the sea cap because that is our only advantage, well, our main advantage anyway. And uh, I think we're, we will actually get the B cap too because I think our gearing is going for the B cap and, uh, well, I am definitely going into the sea cap to try to defend because, like I said, playing like this is boring and uh, sometimes I get impatient. I do wish the game had some kinds of incentives to, for, you know, to do, to do these kinds of things. You see, in closed beta, I read some forum post or something similar. Also, nice little hit and two over pens. In closed beta or somewhere around that, I read something about a forum post about somebody complaining that World of Warships had a problem, namely, that there is no incentive to be the tip of the spear, which is. Um, like the enemy team is currently behind, so they have to push. But there is no incentive for some one player to be the guy that starts to push. It's always better to be the second, third, fourth, fifth guy in the push rather than the first one because the first one gets focus fired. And, uh, you know, at the time I was like, well, yeah, sure, I guess, but it doesn't appear to be much of a problem. But honestly, now that I've played the game for a very long time, I agree with him. I think it's definitely... And oh my god, I just did 48,000 damage to that uh, Montana, I believe, or Iowa. I'm not quite certain. I wasn't paying attention to the name of the ship. And I see a Tashkent, so I'm focusing with secondaries. But again, like I said, I agree with that. Uh, there is no real incentive to be the tip of the spear, to be the guy that goes in first. So my Hydra spots the torpedoes from the Tashkent. Um, actually, I used the... Hydra because I was afraid of torpedoes by the um, Atago, but apparently she didn't torpedo. And with Hydra you can dodge the slow torpedoes very easily. Just go slightly sideways and then just turn back again. Just don't turn too much because then you might be in a position that is unable to dodge. So I know that there is a Tashkent, a Mogami and uh, this Montana ahead. I focus my secondaries on the Montana and I shoot the Tashkent. And now I'm gonna focus secondaries on the Tashkent because she was the only ship visible for a while and I think the uh, destroyer is the primary target anyway because she taking out destroyers seems to be very 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 important in this game and often the game gets dictated by what the destroyers do this is why people say that well if you play carriers and you kill you should kill the destroyers early not only because of the AA implications but because of also the fact that they seem to dictate the game like the pace and what people do. So now the Montana is the only ship visible and I focus her with secondaries at 5.4 kilometers. Notice how I earlier talked about IFHE, right? And how um, these HE shells will penetrate from the front. Well, she is pointing her nose directly at me. And my secondaries are definitely dealing some damage. Even though my main guns seem to be doing none. I aim higher with the main guns there because I don't think I can pen the um, uh, bow, bow armor anyway. And but my aim is to try to maybe take out one of the guns. Okay, so the Tashkent torpedoed again, and I, I saw them, so I should be easily able to dodge them. I focused a fire the Tashkent with secondaries again, because I think destroyers are far more important to uh, kill off early than uh, battleships. Because it appears that destroyers do carry games, in the long run at least. That uh, Montana salvo did hurt, and one of the guns was broken. It's alright though, I focus fired the Montana again, because I don't think my um, secondaries are very effective against that Tashkent. And I try another EP salvo. I don't know why I'm waiting with that one front gun though. I always do this and I think that's a mistake. So I tried to aim at the front and as you saw, four bounces. Nothing else happened. No damage. Yet my secondaries are dealing damage. And uh, well, friendly Kurfürst fortunately took out the Montana. 
So now the focus is on the uh, Tashkent. I don't have Hydra anymore, but she should have like at least another 30-40 seconds before she can torpedo, or even if she can torpedo, I should be getting out of this current position. Now, I'm having a bug right now with the display. Like, look at my fire, right? I don't know how long that fire lasts. I, I just hope right now that this fire doesn't last for a long time. And that's why I'm not using the um, damage control party. But again, I don't know. And I, and this bug really annoys me. Okay, the fire is gone. But that, that still lasted for longer than I expected. I think I would have used damage on if I had known the duration earlier. So the Tashkent is running away and wants to disappear. Which I'm... Um, very happy to um, oblige with because I have only 17,000 HP and uh, there are other battleships also coming towards this direction so I want to keep as much HP as I can at least until I can use my last heal. So our team has six ships left, their team has six sh ships left but we have five battleships, one destroyer, they have uh, two battleships, three cruisers and one destroyer. Now this should generally be our advantage, right? But I'm not quite certain of that, because cruisers can be very good, especially now. You see, with the new skill tree, I, I really actually like the priority target ability. It appears that it's incredibly useful at uh, medium to long range on cruisers, because they will know if a battleship is aiming at them, and they will be able to preemptively start dodging before they actually see, or you know, they will be thinking about dodging before they actually see the fact that uh, you fire at them. So that tends to be very very useful because it's very difficult to hit to sing if you're the only one shooting that person it's very difficult to hit the cruiser at medium to long range as a battleship or actually any ship because uh, she will just dodge and your shells won't land. Anyways I'll try to go and help our um, Bismarck and Gearing, although I think the Bismarck is dead, I'll try to at least uh, kill off the Moskva. And since I've healed back to like 30,000 HP, I have some HP to engage. Actually, it'll be like 35,000, I think. Which is good, because I will need all the, hel all the health I can get. So the Moskva doesn't appear to be moving very fast, which is why I'm gonna fire the way I am. It's 17 kilometers. I am still a Kurfürst, so I'd like to get closer. There's the Bismarck gone. Now, I will, there will be an island between me and the Moscow in a moment, and I don't know if that's actually a bad thing, because there's a Hindenburg coming in, and uh, a few misplaced, or a few fires that go badly for me could very well end my ship, because once I use this Tamekon, uh, any fires subsequent to that will be a runaway fires, and I only have 35,000 HP, so I would very likely die. I'm gonna try to pop out on the right side of this island for a moment. Maybe, if the Moskva obliges, but if she keeps going the way she is, I'm gonna turn the other way instead. Because I don't want to get too close to that Hindenburg over there, I do think that Hindenburg will definitely deal enough damage to kill me with this Moskva, or at least cripple me. Whereas I am rather uncertain of being able to um, actually deal damage to a Hindenburg at 18 kilometers. I don't know why our gearing is trying to fight the Moskva at close range, because, well, just leave it to the battleships. You are our only destroyer. You could just sail around or something and try to take the B-cap, but it is what it is. The gearing actually took out the Moskva, so that's fairly good. And now I'll just go try to hit the Iowa Montana. I don't have much uh, expectations to hit the Atag or the Tashkent anyway, and this Iowa and Montana are fairly close range anyway. The problem will be that uh, I will be squished somewhat in between the uh, Hindenburg and the Iowa and Montana, but then again, it doesn't matter how you angle against uh, the HE spam of uh, Hindenburg. Although it might be that she fires AP and that could hurt, but I'll, ju I'll just have to take the risk. Because honestly, HE spam is just as bad as AP spam at this moment, considering my very low HP. If I still had heals left, it would be alright, but I don't, so... Also, I use the Damacon immediately because I think that it's, well, very necessary right now. I can't waste any HP. I fired at the Montana because I think she's running ground. I did hit, I penned, but only 6,000 damage. And, um, well, I guess I'll just try to get closer and try to kill the Montana and Iowa, or at least do as much as I can. Because I am angled, so they will have trouble actually killing me. So this could work out alright. 
Okay. Montana is... Oh, oh. This is actually unexpected. That's very well played by the enemy Tashkent. I did sit a little in Montana and do a few penetrations, but that was very well played by this Tashkent. He actually smoked both of their paddle ships, the Montana and the Iowa. So this is very problematic. So she is likely to torpedo me at this current moment. Or will at some point before I actually get to kill her. But I do think that killing this Tashkent is very very important now. At this point it's not even because of the fact that she's a destroyer. But at this point it's because he appears to be a very good player. Or at least, you know, a decent player. Considering that he... Uh, did a, did a run on my Kurfürst multiple times early, still survived, and now he actually did uh, also smoke their battleships. This guy knows what he's doing. Unfortunately for him though, the secondaries of a Kurfürst are fairly deadly, and uh, I still survived at 2000 HP, but because I'm spotted, well, I'll probably be taken out by the secondaries of those battleships. Well, there it is. I do wish I could have done my last hit, also this is a very nice uh, flare there for a moment by the sun, looked really cool. But I do wish I had got my last shot off, I could have killed the Montana I think. So the last two ships alive are both our Kurfürst, I don't know what their gearing did to actually die, I think that was very stupid of him. Because he is a gearing, he definitely could have survived any kind of scenario due to just being a battleship, but uh, our friendly ESA Warfare is gonna go in and delete the Montana, and uh, obviously this Iowa does not have much chance either. But yeah, the enemy Tashkent played really well, that's why I'm gonna compliment him. Consider the fact that he's also a Tashkent, not the greatest ship in the world uh, as well. Although I do think the Tashkent is alright. And well, that's the Iowa deleting our uh, Kurfürst ESA Warfare, and now we have Clown Pounder, a 10, against an Iowa and... Uh, Hindenburg. Hindenburg is very healthy, but we do have the cap point advantage. Like I said earlier, if you take an advantage, then try to hold it, because right now, it seemed early on that we were winning fairly, um, fairly hard, right? But actually at the end here, um, we have a 48,000 HP Kurfürst, they have an Iowa and a Hindenburg, although the Iowa just disappeared. They still have a fairly healthy Hindenburg, which will deal significant damage. But all the difference in the world is that the Hindenburg has to attack our Kurfürst. Because we are ahead in points by so much. Because we actually went for the cap zones and objectives. So all that uh, the Kurfürst needs to do here is not die, which is very very easy against the cruiser. Now if it were a battleship against battleship, this were, you know, a possibility. Or if our team had the cruiser and they had a battleship, this would all be a possibility. But they have a cruiser, and we have a battleship. There's no way that he's gonna kill our uh, battleship. Well, I guess there is a way, but it's very unlikely that the Hindenburg is going to be able to actually take out this Kurfürst. And again, you know, attacking or defending is easier than attacking. And, well, there's the points, and we won the game. Excellent. Well played, Clown Pounder, and thanks for uh, finishing it off. Only 360,000 credits, um, I guess I don't have any of the credits flags, I believe, because I don't really care. It's... it's... it's a press account. 2002 base experience, close quarters expert, uh, first blood, dreadnought, also I did 185,000 damage. And look at that, 27,000 with secondaries, no fires though, but 27,000 damage with secondaries. That's a significant amount, let's find the Montana, no, this one is not the one I actually fought. This is the one. My main batteries did zero damage, but my secondaries did 17,000 damage, well almost 18,000, in 65 shell hits. That's a very high amount of secondary damage. 2.6 million damage or potential damage and 194,000 damage taken. This is a very very high amount of damage taken. Like a really really high amount of damage taken. You can't get all that much higher damage taken I believe. That was actually higher than the amount of damage I dealt myself, and this is the, you know, after report. Not so great, but it is what it is. Anyways, um, oh yeah, six little hits, by the way, in a Kurfürst. That's very good. Anyways, um, I would like to thank my uh, division mates, and if you like this video, then like it. If you disliked it, then dislike it, and I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon now. 
Thank you very much for your continued support, Duncan, and I hope I see you guys next time.